Hello friends, this is Shelly. So glad you joined me in this tutorial. We are going to make this little elf on the shelf and I'm telling you, he's a riot to make. He's just so much fun. Um, not hard at all and uh, you can do it. You're gonna need, I used Bernat Premium Yarn in red and in white and I used a pound of love in the color straw for the face. And then you're gonna need a pom-pom. You're gonna need your 22 needle machine and uh, a cup of coffee and maybe a cookie or two. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to get right into this project. But before we do, please take a second to go and subscribe. If you have not subscribed to my channel, please, please, please do that. Um, doesn't take uh, any time, doesn't cost anything. It just helps YouTube circulate my videos um, better. So hit that subscribe button and the like button, and I'd appreciate that so much. So once you have your supplies ready, we're going to get going on this little guy. All right, friends. If you're ready to start, then so am I. We're gonna grab our color that we're going to use for the face. We're gonna put it, um, we're just gonna get it right here. We're gonna get our last white and our first black needle in line with our yarn feeder. A little dusty, okay? We're going to cast on. So we're gonna go behind that first black with our yarn, just like that. In front, behind, in front, behind and in front, all the way around. And before we get to the end, we're gonna set our counter to zero. So it's ready to go when we are, okay? And it should be in front of that last white. You open the yarn feeder and you pop it in there. And we are going to knit a total of 18 rows. Always make sure that this little one, that first one is down over those red teeth. And then we're gonna just knit. Slow for the first row, just so it can pick it up. Sometimes it snags a little bit, but that's okay. We'll make it through. And then you can keep going. Now I put a little bit of tension, not a lot, just a little bit on my, um, yarn just like that. I hold it between my fingers that way I can tell if there's a knot coming up um, in my ball or if I'm, you know, if it runs out then I feel it before it makes it to my project, okay? So I'm going to keep going till I get 18 rows. Almost there. This is 17. And 18 and before I get all the way around to 18 I'm gonna reset my counter to zero I just find it works better that way for me you can um, just keep adding if you like but I'm going to reset it for the next color we're going to cut our yarn tail open our latch put it between the last white and the first black then go ahead and grab your red yarn um, this is what we're going to use for the body and for the legs okay so we're going to pop that into our yarn feeder I want to do the jogless join on this one so and if you've been following my channel, you know that this has been <laughs> something that I've had to practice, but I've gotten good at it. Like, um, So practice makes perfect. Let me be your example. <laughs> I guess I've shown you some pretty bad jogless joins, but but I think I'm good at it now because I've just, pers uh, you know, continued to persevere. So if this is your first time doing a jogless join, persevere because you will get it. Okay, but we're going to, we took it to the other side of that white needle. We're going to knit three or four needles. Then we're going to take both ends of our working yarn and we're going to just even up our tension here so pop that down under the divider and then give this a little snug pull drop both of those ends into the middle and we will fix it once we will fix our jogless join once we get this off the machine okay so now what we want to do is we want to knit 28 rows of red for the body so i'm going to go ahead oops got a little bit of stuffing there and i'm going to knit 28 rows for the body rows of red so because I set my counter to zero I know that once I get to 28 on my counter I'm ready to go to the next part okay so keep going friends and once you get 28 rows of red done see me back and we'll move on to the next part coming up on row two I'm finishing row 28 so I can see that black divider coming around. If you haven't done so already, take a black permanent marker and mark that divider that's between your last white and your first black. So you always see when the end of your row is coming around and you never go past it and then have to uh, rip out your work, okay? So we have 28 rows on our machine, um, on our counter. That is for our body. Now we need another 45 rows for our legs. You can reset this to zero if you want and do 45 uh, rows. Um, but because it's the same color, I just keep going. And um, we're going to do 45 more rows for the legs, which will take us to um, 73 on our counter. Okay. So 
So in essence, we've done 73 rows of red. So keep going till you have 73 rows in total of red done, 28 for the body, 45 for the legs, and then I'll see you back. Coming up, clicked on 73. I'll wait for that black divider to come around. I know I finished all of my red. Now I'm gonna cut off a long end and we're going to cast off. Open your yarn feeder, take out that tail, put it in between the last white and the first black. Make sure that you put it in between those two because we still have to finish knitting this needle and we have to knit this needle, okay? Take your yarn needle that you're using for casting off. Stand up here. And we're going to turn our barrel till this first one is released. Once that needle drops down and let's go of that loop, we can begin removing our stitches, okay? And once we get some tension on this piece right here, then we can start taking off more at once, which I shall show you next, okay? So now I'm gonna just rotate my barrel a little bit further. I'm gonna take it off, hold it with my thumb. Now, if you pull up too hard on this, you're gonna release this loop from these red teeth and you're gonna drop your row. So if you're not, if you don't have a comfortable tension ready yet because you're new, then put your finger on the one that's after it before you take that one off and then continue in that way and you will prevent, you will, you know, decrease your chances of getting a drop stitch, okay? There we go. But if you've done it for a while and you know what the feel of the machine is and the tension that you need, then you don't have to do that. All right, so we've got Two more to go here and we have our piece that we are going to remove from our machine we're going to fit, fix our jogless join and stretch this out but before you do that set this aside and make yourself one more you need two exactly the same just like this okay so have fun friends see you in a bit all right so we have our two wonderful pieces off the machine I haven't stretched them out or fixed the jogless join. We're going to set those aside because for this project, I'm choosing to make all the pieces first, okay? Um, while I have my machine out and I tried to shine it up a little bit better for you because it was shamefully dusty in the last few clips. <laughs> um, so, so I shined her up a little bit for you and um, we will continue. So you're going to take your red yarn. You're going to bring your last white and your first black in line with your yarn feeder. We are going to make the arms, okay? We're going to cast on behind that first black, in front, behind, in front, all the way around. When you get about halfway around, you know the drill. Set your counter to zero. So we're ready to go. In front of that last white one, pop it into the yarn feeder. Put that loop down over those red teeth. I always help this first one because I want to make sure that, that, um, that it, it knits properly, okay? And we are going to go ahead, get that first row done, and then you can go. I've got a little bit of tension on the back again, just like this, okay? Pull down that little end there, that helps that first stitch not to tuck. And we're gonna keep knitting until we have 28 rows of red. Have fun, my friends. I'll see you when you get to 28. Coming up on row 28. I'm watching for that black divider to come around. There we go. Just finished row 28. So I'm going to cut off a tail. Open my yarn feeder. Put this between the last white, the first black. I'm going to grab my white yarn. I'm going to insert it into that yarn feeder. I'm going to swing it back around to the other side of that white needle. And we're going to knit three or four needles. Then we're gonna take both ends of our white. And you see how it's coming there? I'm gonna help that down. And then watch how it snugs up in there. Just like that, pull both ends. That way your tension in your first few stitches is gonna be the same as the rest of the project, okay? And now we are going to knit seven rows of white. So 28 and seven is what, 33? 35. <laughs> So we're going to have 35 rows on our counter. You could have reset it if you wanted to do it. It's only seven rows, or you can just count it out. That's two. Oh, three. So I think I have a broken needle, guys. I can't go much faster than this. Oh, so sad. And this is 35. Okay, 
Then we're going to take a bit of a tail and we're going to cast off. Open that yarn feeder, put this between the last white and the first black, just like what we did with our main piece. Okay. And we're going to remove our project from the machine. I think I have to take this apart. I have not ever taken this machine apart to clean it, um, but something is snapping that I've never heard before. I'm thinking I might have cracked a needle, but that's okay. It's done me well, and I have more needles, and I don't know if that's what it is. I hope it's that, because that's a simple fix. I don't want my handle to be broken. <laughs> In any way, but I did hear a snap, and uh, I know what tomorrow's project is going to be now. Okay, so you're going to remove this piece and you're going to make one more arm exactly like it. Okay. So go ahead, make one more that's exactly like this and I'll see you back when you're done. All right, friends, we've got our pieces and we're ready to start assembling. We're going to do the collar part and the beanie after we assemble this part. Okay. We're going to turn This first two pieces inside out. Okay, so take a look at this. Okay, this is what our join looks like. It's off centered. Okay, but we're gonna do the jogless join. So watch the magic happen. You're gonna take this in your hand, you're gonna put your fingers over on top of that top row and below that bottom row just to hold your piece secure. Press down and then take both of these strands and pull. You will feel the little tug happen. And when it happens, it's straight. You just pull until you feel that, that little, I don't even <laughs> wish there was a, a sound for it, until you feel that little um, tug just give. And when it does, it's perfect. So now you're going to tie a knot, just like that. I don't want to make it tighter um, by with the, with the knot, so often I'll do three. And then that third one is when I'll do it really tight. I'm going to snip that off. We are going to stretch this in both directions, widthwise first, and then lengthwise. This is the wrong side, but that's okay. And then we're gonna turn it inside out, or right side out, and see what happened with our join, okay? I'm confident that it's beautiful. Okay, do you see where it is? <laughs> So yes, I have gotten better. See, practice makes perfect. It's not on that side. It's on this side. It's right there. I can feel the knot. But look at that. It's just like so beautiful. Now go ahead and do that with your second one. And if you don't get it as gorgeous as this, don't worry about it. Go look at some of my other videos that I've done with the jogless join and you'll see that it's, it's just in the last little while that I've got it perfect. <laughs> okay. So um, yeah, it was a new thing for me too, not that long ago. Okay. So go ahead. Finish this other this other one, do the same thing, and then I'll see you back. All right, so now that we've done that, and I wish I could see your jogless joins, you'll have to show me when you make one and put it in the group, <laughs> put it in my Facebook group. We need to, to mark where the legs and the body um, are, like the division between them. So we know that we did 28 rows for the body. I'm just gonna double check my chart. Uh, 28 rows for the body. And we did 45 rows for the legs. Because this is curled up like this, it's easier to count from the top here. So grab yourself your favorite stitch markers and we're gonna count down. So let's just get these nice and even. And we're gonna count down from the top stitch here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. I'm gonna put a stitch marker in that 28th stitch. Oops, I want to grab, grab both. Just like that. I'm going to go ahead and count it on this side, put a marker. I'm going to count it on this side, put a marker, and on this side, and put a marker, okay? So then I know that I have 45 rows left that go this way, and up here is the body, which is 28 rows. So okay, let's just do one more together. Let's do this other side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, 
19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, and 28, right here. Okay, so this is straight across. Now do the same thing for that other piece, and then we will begin seaming them together, okay? All right, so once you have all four of your markers in, we're going to go back down to the bottom. We're going to pull on this bottom edge to tighten, okay? So smooth it out as you go so that those stitches in that last row is all nice and smooth and even, okay? Don't cut this off because we need it. You're going to put this end on your, on your needle and we're going to just reinforce it, okay? So just go around all those stitches, that top row of stitches, just like this. Just picking up that top row all the way around to give it some extra strength, okay? And then pull on that. I want to make sure that my piece is flat so that my edges are actually on the edge, okay? Not that it, I don't want this to be like that. You want the your stitch markers to be on the, on the edges, okay? And we've got this one all tightened up. So now what we're going to do is we are going to fold it in half and we're going to mattress stitch up to our, up to our um, points here, okay? But what you wanna do is you wanna make sure that the wide part of your stitch is going to the left, okay? So I chose the row where it's where it's not. So I'm gonna just move this over right to there, just so that I can begin working on that stitch where the wide part of the V is going up to the left, okay? Just like that. I'm gonna smooth that out. I'm gonna go over to the other side and I, lo and behold, did the same thing. So I'm going to pop this over a half a, a row, okay? And then that all equals out. Okay, just like that. Put those two together. I'm just gonna pinch them all the way down. See how I'm lining that up? I'm gonna go all the way down just like that. Just like that. When you get to the very end, you might not be able to stay on the same row and that's okay. You see where it is here. Um, we're gonna get into that. Just in this very beginning, I'm probably not gonna be in the, in the same. Yeah, well, I think I can actually in this one. Cause I didn't, yeah, you can. If you, if you manipulate it, you can. So I'm gonna go right into that bottom. I'm gonna pick up two bars. So I'm going into that one stitch, the center of that one stitch, going past the, the next stitch and into the center of that stitch above it. Okay, then I'm, I'm seeing this is my row. So I'm gonna go way down into there, into the center of that one stitch. You'll see better when I get further up. I'm gonna pick up two of those bars, which means I'm, I'm going in through, through two stitches, okay? Then where I came out, this is where my yarn end is coming out. I'm gonna go into the center of that stitch. I'm gonna pick up that bar, then pick up that next bar. This is where I'm coming out here. I'm gonna go in where I came out, pick up that one bar, pick up that next bar. Go back to this side, go in where it came out, pick up the two bars. This is the invisible stitch or the mattress stitch, okay? Go in where it's coming out, pick up two bars, and we're gonna go back and forth, just like that, until we get a few inches done here, and then we can pull it tight and continue. See, when I'm holding it with my, my index finger in the middle there, and my third finger and my thumb on this side, I'm squeezing that so that I, I stay on that same row, okay? That will help you. So many people say, I can't stay on the same row. I don't know how you stay on the same row. That's how I stay on the same row. I make sure that I line it up to begin with. Then as I go down, I'm pinching with those three fingers so that my same row is, is visible all the time. And I never, like, I just never have a problem with it then. I'm always able to stay on the same row, okay? So I'm going to do one more, just like that. Then you're going to pinch at the end here, pull this end, and tighten this up, just like that, okay? You don't want to pull too tight because look what it does. It just curls that end in, so then I'm going to pull that back out. You want to snug it up, but you don't want to over, over tighten it, or you'll have a sloppy looking piece, okay? So now I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to line this up again. I'm going to pinch it. I see I came out in this spot, so I'm going to pick up two. And I'm going to go across to this side, pick up two. 
pick up two, pick up two, pick up two. I'm going to go all the way up to my stitch markers, except for I'm going to stop in a little bit and, and um, tighten it again. Okay, I don't like to go too far. Just like that, oops, wrapped around the foot. Just like that. Then I'm gonna pinch where I closed it off here and close off the next section. Then I pull on this just to make sure that there's no, no tightness in there that's gonna, gonna cause it to pucker, okay? I'm gonna go all the way up to the stitch markers and when I get there, I'll see you back. All right, so I'm nearing the end. Okay, and I have one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, so it's perfect. Okay, and we're going to finish up all the way. Okay, I only have one stitch left. That's the one the stitch marker's in, so I'm gonna take those stitch markers out. I know I'm just gonna pick up one bar, okay? Just like that. And then we're gonna tighten this. We're going to then go underneath the two loops of that bar that we just went. This is the stitch that we're coming out of. We're gonna pick up that stitch and we're gonna pick up the one that we worked on the other side. And we're going to make a knot. Just like that, okay? So now we have one leg completely finished. You're gonna go ahead smooth that out you're gonna go ahead you're gonna do that with your second piece exact doing exactly the same thing um, I'm gonna actually put the stitch marker back in here well, I don't need it in there what am I thinking <laughs> and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do this exact same thing to the second um, part and then I'll see you back okay friends have fun all right so I have them done and uh, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to stuff them just so ever so slightly. Now, I could have done it before I sewed it together, but I don't like to get little fuzzies in my stitches there because I'm a good, like I'm a, you know me, I'm attention to detail. <laughs> and if you put it in and then you fold it over, sometimes you got little fuzzy sticking out of there. And I don't like that at all. So I am going to put it in after, but we're putting hardly any in. Okay. Stick my finger in there, it's easier. There we go. Just to get the first little bit in. And again, it's like just a very light padding. It's almost flat. You see, like this is all I'm taking. I'm gonna shove that down in there with my two fingers. Then I'm pinching it. I'm pinching it on the inside so that I can drag it up. Look at that, it's flat, but it is stuffed. It's flat and stuffed very, very lightly. It doesn't take much at all, and that's why I like to do it this way. Then we put that in there till we can meet up with that other. Okay, a very, very light stuffing. Go ahead and do that to this one, to your first one, and then do it to your second one. Pull on it like this and smooth it out just so it's nice and flat. And then when you do that, you can see if it comes up to the edge there, then you know you've got it right. If it pokes out the edge, then pull that off. Make it nice and flat, but soft. Okay, go ahead and do that to both pieces and I'll see you back. All right, so we have our two pieces. Our two legs are stuffed how we want them to be. Okay, last call to pull a little bit out. I just squeeze on it. <laughs> push on it and if some comes out I just take it out okay now what we're going to do is we're going to find our needle we're going to sew our body together so what we're going to do is take that red those red pieces of, of yarn that are in the way there flip this to the side flip this one to the side okay so this is going to actually be flat the other way <laughs> now that we work so hard to flatten them we're going to have to re-flatten them but it's easy to do so we're going to take our needle I should really use one that's a bit bigger, but I like this one, okay? And we're going to take our two sides. So when you have this together like this, okay, you're gonna take this outside edge and that outside edge. You're gonna bring them together, just like that, and we're going to mattress stitch up. So I'm going to start from this side. 
because then I know I'm lining up my stitches. I'm going to put a stitch marker. I've got the wide end of the V facing to the left on both sides. I'm going to put a stitch marker in there just to hold them in place. Then I'm going to follow that row all the way down. Okay, just like I showed you before. Okay, we're going to get all the way down into there. Then you're going to take your yarn end, and if there's a little hole there, we're going to fix that a little bit later, okay? So then you're just going to pick up your two bars on the one side, go across, pick them up on the other side. It's a bit tricky to figure out where to go, but just eyeball it. And, and you'll get it, okay? And then we're going to match our stitch up to the top. Just like what we were doing with the legs, okay? Now, because I don't know if I started in exactly the right point down here, um, when I get closer to the top, I'm going to I'm going to count how many stitches are left so that I can make sure that I work it out evenly. Okay, I'll show you in one second. So let's tighten this one by pulling it, making it nice and beautiful. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve stitches left on that side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and I'm I've got two extras here, but I haven't done this side yet. So now there's now there's 12 on each side. So I judged that perfectly. If I wouldn't have, if I would have had, if I have 13 now on this side and 12 on this side, I'd just pick up one bar here to even it out and then keep going two and two. Um, just because I don't want this to be off centered like that when I get to the end, okay? So you just make sure you work it out so that when you get up to the top, it's gonna line up. And we're going to go ahead and finish this off, okay? Mattress stitch is relaxing. Like it's really, it to me, I find it very relaxing. So for those of you who, you who struggle and who um, get all frustrated and, and uh, you know, think you can't do it because you go off the line, um, I'm just going to challenge you again to keep going. Don't give up. Just keep practicing, follow the little techniques that I've shown you um, that will make it easier and you will get it, okay? So now I'm gonna pull on that again and look at that, it's like one panel. You just will, can't even see it. You're gonna go ahead, you're gonna flip it around and you're going to do that on this side, now putting those two together, okay? So go ahead, take your other piece of yarn that's here, stitch it up the same way, going up this side and I'll see you back when you're done. All right, so we have both of those done. Now you can take just a piece of um, yarn on your needle and you can just seam, seam this up, okay? So you can just pick up a couple stitches here. Just like that. I've got way too much yarn on here, but that's okay. Pick, a, pick up a couple there. You're not following any mattress stitch guidelines or anything, you're just, you're just gonna seam it closed, okay? Then I can take my two ends, put them back on my needle, and put them right into the body. Just like that. Cut it off. Okay. And that part's done. Now what we're going to do is we're going to stuff our body. I'm going to worry about the head in a minute, but let's get the body done first. So I'm going to take my stuffing. I'm going to pull it apart so it's nice and thin. Okay, and I'm going to flat, put it flat into, into the body. Okay, just like that. I do not want a fat body. I just want a little bit of cushion. Okay, a little bit on that side. I'm using my fingers to spread it out in there, right down to the legs, spread it out nice and flat. 
hoping I'm in the camera. Okay, push that up with my hands. Take some of that out. Don't need all that stuffing. Okay, so I've got a flat body. Um, actually, I want a little bit more. You want it stuffed, but you don't want it fat. So, but a little bit more stuffing than what you would have done for the legs. Get that in there. But like a little flat pillow. See, that's good. Just like that. Okay. So it's about, I don't know if you can tell in the camera, but I've got a little bit more than what I did. Well, almost equal, but maybe a tad bit more in the, in the body than what I do. I want my body to be square. <laughs> okay. But now what we're going to do is we're going to take a piece of yarn, red yarn. And we're going to a fairly long piece and we're going to make our our seam across the legs here and across the legs here I'm going to go ahead and grab my needle and, and yarn and I'll be right back all right so I did one for you here um actually I was videotaping it as I did it and I knocked the camera with my hand and so the video was all crooked so um we've got one done here I'm going to do the other side with you so we've got our yarn on our end we're going to just follow this across okay Pick up a stitch on the side, two bars, just like that. Go through. Leave enough so that you can uh, put it on your needle and hide it later. Then I'm going to just go into that one more time, just so that it catches. See? Just like that. Okay? Then all we're going to do is we're going to go down, and then I'm coming up. So I'm just picking up a... I went all the way through, and then up. It's very, very simple. And then down through the middle of that stitch, and straight down till it comes out. And then pick up that other end, the other side, and oh, I knocked the crazy camera again. There we go. And then down. And this one I want to come up a little bit closer, so I'm going to just go up to the side here. So for all you seamstresses, you just go to town and do it in the best way that you know how. I'm not a seamstress, so I'm just doing it how it looks good to me. Okay, and then we're going to go around that side, just like that. And we're going to come back. So here's where my stitch is. I'm going to go, uh, and this is hasn't been stitched. So I'm going to go down on the right side of that stitch and up on the left side. And then I'm going to go over this piece that was missed. Then I'm going to go down and then up here. I'm going right through, so I'm getting the other layer on the back. Just like that. This works for me. Then I'm pulling it, I'm getting a straight line across, so yay. Then I'm gonna go down here. Let me take a look at that. I think it looks pretty good. Okay, let's see what the other side looks like. That looks pretty good too, but I want to make sure that there's a solid line there too, so I'm gonna just go back up like this. And then back down. Just like so. And I'm happy with that. So now I'm going to just cut this off. I'm going to tie a knot. Firm knot here. Just like so. Take my needle. Put my yarn ends onto the needle. Okay. And then I'm going to hide it in to my work and cut it off okay so grab yourself another piece of red yarn put it on your needle and we're going to do the knees all right so for the knees i'm going to go three inches down so put your your marker on that line and go three three inches down and it's about there okay so i'm going to take a stitch marker i'm going to eyeball it just about there okay and i'll start on the other side first and you're going to do the same thing. If I start on the other side, it's because then I'm eyeballing where, where it is here. I don't need to have a stitch marker in my way. And I'm going to do the same thing right across through all the layers. Make a straight line here and here. Go ahead and do that and I'll see you when you're done. Okay, so we've got that done. It's looking fantastic. We are going to um, now work on the head. Okay, so I've got this piece that's here. Um, I'm going to attach a tan piece, okay? So we're just going to go into that first row, that first stitch, right? Just like that, okay? And then I'm going to just go in again, just like 
this, tie a bit of a knot, one knot. Then I'm going to tie these two pieces, these two ends, just like that. Loosely tie it, like a, a firm, like a knot, but don't tug on it. Cut that off. This can be hidden inside of there. We're going to use this tan to mattress stitch up the side of the head here, okay? We're going to worry about this part later. So we're going to um, take it again so that we have the wide part of the V going to the left. Okay, so here's my row. I'm going to do that on this same side. That looks like where it naturally falls, right there. Okay, and I'm going to just get way in there and pick up two bars. Okay, way in there at the beginning of the stitch, pick up two bars. We're going to do this all the way up to the top. Okay, so a lot of mattress stitching in this project, but you know, really not that hard. It's a good practice. Gives you lots of good practice, so the next projects that we do <laughs> together, you'll be a pro at it. Okay, so we're going to just continue up. We've done a lot of work today. I've been sitting here for a while. Um, and if you've been following along with me, you've been sitting for a while too. So why don't you go ahead and hit the pause. Go grab yourself a cup of coffee and a cookie. <laughs> or some popcorn or some chips or something good. Something carb filled. Or if you want, go grab yourself some fruit if you really want to. And give yourself a little bit of a break and come back and let's finish this together, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and do one more bar there. And one more bar here. I'm going to pull this tight, just like that. Okay. Then from there, we're going to do the same thing on this side. Okay. And then we're going to worry about this top part when we're done that. So go ahead, attach piece of yarn the same way to this side. Do exactly what we did to the other side. And when you're done that, I will see you back. Okay. All right, so I have it done on both sides. And before I cinch um, the end, we're gonna just tie this off, okay? So just just um, go into that second stitch from the bottom and tie this one off. We don't need to have this there, okay? And you don't have to go all the way up to the top, just right where you ended there. Tuck that in between the two layers, cut it off, get it out of the way, and do that on the other side too, for this long tail here that we mattress stitched up the side with as well, okay? So go ahead, do this one, and then grab some stuffing for the head. And again, I'll see you back. We've got that done. We're going to find the center here. Taking our stuffing, putting it into the head, just like that. Grab as much as you think you need. We're going to start tightening this now, and then we can determine whether we need more. So just take one, because there's two halves here. So you're going to tighten this one half, and then you're going to tighten this other half. Okay, just like that, making sure that it's it's smooth at the top there. Okay, and what you need to do next before we do anything else is you need to take another um, strand of... I'm going to cut this one and use it because I can use that other side to sew around the top there. We're going to go along the top seam of our neck. So very easy to find because of the color change. Pick up one stitch, go over the next, pick up, over the next, pick up all the way around that bottom row of tan stitches, just like so, okay? So that we can form our neck. How's it going so far? Are you enjoying the process? <laughs> I pretend you talk to me. There we go. I wish that you could. I wish that we could have a big craft room that we can get could get together and, and then tie this off. We could get together and do these things, um, set up our machines and just go to town. Wouldn't that just like be so fun? Man, just have a big conference room where all of us are together with our machines and our yarn and laughter and oh it'd just be such a dream maybe one day we'll have to to do that <laughs> okay so we have our neck formed now so that helps you to un, um, be able to figure out how much stuffing you want in the head I think that's actually perfect now what you're going to do is you're going to take one of these ends 
and you got it. We're going to just seam it together. So you've got your circle here and you've got your circle there. We're going to go around the outside of this circle, just like that, to the front there. Then we're going to pick up the outside of this one. So it starts there. We're going to go around that top row of stitches, bring it around to this half of that row, just like so, and then pull it, okay? We'll tie off on that uh, on that end there. Then we're gonna just now pick up this side here and continue around. Just like that until you close the top. Check your head before you completely close it to make sure you have enough stuffing, okay? I think I want a little bit more in there. I've still got a little bit of a hole there. I'm gonna stuff can get my finger in there. I'm going to stuff a little bit more in there. Make sure that it's where you want it. Then you're going to go ahead and you're going to close that off as tightly as you can. Tie it to here and then hide your ends. Okay, so go ahead, do that and I'll see you back. All right, so I put a little bit more stuffing in the head and I closed up the top and I like it a lot better. I attached one arm and I'm going to show you how you're going to do that. We'll do that next. So grab your arm piece. Okay, stretch it out. Get it all nice and soft and lined up. We're going to begin with this part, okay, with the white. You're just going to pull it just like that. And we're going to reinforce it. Don't cut this off because we're going to use it to, to match or stitch up the side of the, of the um, piece. Because uh, it doesn't matter what color you use to match or stitch because it's an invisible stitch. So I can use whatever color I like. So we're going to just reinforce this. Just need to do it once. Pull it, but make sure that you don't tie it off yet because we want to make sure it's, well, once you fold this in half, you want to make sure that your yarn end comes to the side because that's where we're going to begin our, our sewing, okay? So just make sure it comes out at the side just like that. Then give it one little knot to hold it in place. Just like so, okay? Then you're going to come down to the other end. And you're going to... Did I not do my invisible? I did not on this one. Good thing I caught that. I saw that little guy hanging out. So make sure that you do your, your invisible join magic, okay? Just like that. Because I know I whenever I, I do work like that, then I cut it off so it's shorter. Um, because this one wasn't cut off. It was peeking out the end, so that's what reminded me that I forgot to do it. So double check yours before you um, finish it off like this and make sure that you've got your invisible seam done. Okay, so we are going to then make sure that this, this end is on the side. And if it's not, you can, you can reposition it after. But you're going to go ahead and you're going to pull this, but you're not going to pull it tight. You're not going to pull it closed. You're just going to pull it so it's about three inches. I measured it so you'd have a bit of a ballpark um, size there, okay? So let me now measure that. Two and three quarters. That's actually what my last one was, two and three quarters, okay? And then you're going to put your needle on the end. And we're going to just seam this closed. So I'm going to put a knot in the beginning there just to get it started and to hold that in place. And then all I do is literally go across like this. And seam it right across, okay? Just so that it's closed at the end. I'm only picking up the very top because it's going to have another seam in it when we join to the, to the body. So um, you don't need to do any major work here, okay? So you get it closed. It's actually good enough and I'm going to tie it off. I'm going to leave this one for sewing onto the body. I'm going to go back down to this one, okay? And you can see that it is not where I want it to be. I thought it would be. Oh, let's go over to this side. Let's turn it this way. Okay, so it's a little bit over. I'm going to put it back over to the side. You want it right on the very side, okay? Just like that, okay? And now what we're going to do is we're going to fold it in half. We're going to line up our bottom this row with the top row, making sure that you have the wide part of the V going to the right, 
pardon me, going to the left, just like we've, I've taught you in all the other times that we've done it. So here's your V. The wide part of the V is up at, to the left, okay? And you're going to just line up those two rows, and you're going to match your stitch all the way up. I've started it already just to save time on the camera, but you're going to take a little bit of stuffing, and you're going to pop it in there. Not a lot, just a little bit, okay? Now, this is what I didn't do in the last because I don't like the little fibers um, poking out, but it is easier with these longer pieces. So um, I'm just going to lay it flat in there just like that. Maybe that's a bit too much. You just want a very thin layer. Okay. Just like that. And then you're going to continue your mattress stitch. Now I'm using this white yarn again because it's invisible. You can't see it. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and I am going to sew up all the way. I'm just going to show you uh, how invisible it is. When you pull it, you can't see it. So it doesn't matter if you're using the white. I'm gonna do that all the way up to the top. Then I'm gonna tie off and knot it. Then I'm gonna hide my white yarn tail into the work there. And then what I'm gonna do, and I'm gonna just explain this to you so that I don't um, take up so much camera time. I'm gonna put this red end on my needle and I'm gonna feed it through to this middle here, okay? So I'm gonna feed it through to the middle there, tie it off in a knot, and that's how I'm from the center of this flat side, I'm going to begin sewing it onto my head. So once once that is through the center, then I go to the side of my neck and I follow this up and I pick the center, the center um, stitch just like that. I pull it through and that will automatically line that up in the center, okay? Because it's from the center here to the center there. Then I just do two stitches across on this side and two stitches across on that side um, to sew that on. And it will look like this, okay? So that's just how it is, just in between the neck and the body. Um, and I don't feel I have to do that on camera. I think that you you uh, understand, will understand what I'm saying by that, okay? And then once you get that sewn on, put some white yarn on your needle, and I will come back and show you how we do the thumb, okay? All right, so once you have your um, arms sewn on, you have to decide which side you like better. Okay, and I like this side better, so this is where the side that I'm putting my thumbs on, okay? That's why we do the thumb, thumbs after. So what I do is I do it over four rows. So two rows on this side of the um, body and two rows on that side. So I'm just gonna go, I'm just gonna go into between the, okay, so this is counting as one, this is two. I'm gonna go in between there and then out this other side here. So I have four rows of stitches in between. I'm gonna pull that through then I'm just gonna come down to the bottom here and I'm gonna loop it through where I want my tip of my thumb, okay? I'm just gonna do that once. Then I'm just gonna go back in. I'm gonna hold this end so it doesn't um, pull through. And then that's how you do it. And then I'm just gonna go around that three times, knot it off. Well, let me just do this. That's two. Okay, move that over so it's in the right place. Pull it, and then one more time. Through there. Through there. Put that into the right spot. Come down, and then I'm just going to pick up that top row right there, just so that I have something to go underneath before I tie it off. I'm going to tie these two off in a knot, and then hide, it in, hide the ends into the mitten, and then I've got both of my thumbs, okay? All right, so now it's time to do the beanie. So we're gonna need waste yarn for this, okay? So we're gonna cast on, put our last white first black in line with our yarn guide. We're going to go behind that first black, in front, behind and in front, all the way around. Okay, because we're gonna make a fold up brim, so we need the waste yarn. We're going to put that into our guide and we're going to knit however many rows of waste yarn you're comfortable with. I don't know how long this piece of yellow yarn is, but I'm gonna typically do seven. Five, six, and one more. And before I get to the end, I'm gonna change my row counter to zero. Okay. And my last white, first black are in line. I'm gonna cut off that waist yarn, open the yarn guide, put that yarn tail between the last white and the first black, then we're going to grab our white yarn, okay? Put that into our yarn guide. Again, in between the last white, first black. 
we are going to knit three or four stitches and we're going to pull those two yarn ends just to tighten up that tension just like we always do and we're going to knit 14 rows okay so go ahead knit 14 rows and I'll see you when I get to the end all right so I've knit 14 rows I'm going to cut off my white open the yarn feeder put it in between that last white and the first black I'm going to add my red yarn okay I'm going to set my row counter to zero. Should have done that before I got to the, got to the very end because sometimes I forget then. <laughs> but set it to zero. And what we're gonna do is we're going to fold up this brim. So you're gonna pull up your, your um, waist yarn, okay, where you started. When you look at your tail from your working yarn, it's coming out of this yellow loop here, okay? And there's another loop that's coming out of that one. So right to the left of that tail, okay? Is the first loop you're going to pick up that loop you're going to put it over that first needle and underneath the nook of that needle okay just like that i'm going to leave these two white ones out actually because i need to tie them off and then we're going to knit that or turn our handle so we can get to that second one okay it's going to pick up that red we're going to pick up the next loop put it over the, the needle okay we're going to go to the next one Pick up that third loop, put it over the needle, making sure that your needle's catching that red yarn too as you go by, okay? And we're going to keep doing this all the way around till we get every loop onto a hook, okay? So, but you can see right here, when you, when you spread out your waist yarn, these top loops here of your working yarn are the ones you're choosing. And the reason why you use a contrasting color waist yarn, um, or one that's vastly different, is so that you can easily see those loops. Pick it up with your loom hook. And you're going to go all the way around just like this. At the end of the project, when we take it off, then we'll remove our waist yarn. You can do it after you start your red, if you want. Do it while it's on the machine or do it when it's off. I'm going to leave it till it's off this time, okay? Often I do it when it's on, actually. <laughs> but we're going to just keep going like this. Tugging on that red a little bit because that first row is going to be a little loose. You should tug on it after every two or three stitches um, just so that you can have a tighter tension. Oops, I I pulled that right out of the socket there. Okay, so go around and add all of your stitches to your needles until you get to the last one, okay? And then I'll see you back. All right, so I just attached all the white ones. So I'm going to take these two white ends and I'm going to tie a firm knot. I'll hide those into my work later. Um, if you can tuck them in there go ahead but I find that too hard to do so I'll just leave it and then this one um, I will tie to to the white as well should have tied that together but we can just do that now just like that drop those in there okay and your counter should say that you've knit one row already and we're gonna go ahead and let me just double check my row count we're gonna do 15 rows of red so we need 14 more as we go through this first round let's give it some help Okay, so push down your yarn over those two red teeth for every needle for at least the first round, okay? It'll just make your life easier. And tuck these down underneath, because with that waist yarn there, it gets pretty loose, okay? Um, so that first row might be a little bit loose, but that's okay. And we're going to just, there we go, got a good start. Pull it down, second row. And there you go. Now you can just knit like normal until you have 15 rows knit. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna, you're going to take a long tail here. You're gonna cut it off and then you're gonna take off all of your stitches just like we, we've done on every other piece, okay? Um, so cast off your machine and then I will see you back. So for this again, you're gonna do 15 rows of red. All right, there's our beanie. We're gonna set it aside and we're going to cast on with our white. Just like normal, okay? So cast on, then you're gonna knit 10 rows and you're gonna cast off, okay? So cast on like this, knit 10 rows, cut off a tail, take off your stitches and I'll see you back. All right, so let's take our beanie. We're gonna stretch it out. 
we are going to tighten the top like this. You're going to put this on your needle and you're going to reinforce around the edge there. Then you're going to um, leave it long, don't cut it off, and we're going to um, use it again later. So go under each one of these little stitches at the top, tighten it, then when you get to the end, tie a little knot to fasten it off and then see me back. All right, once that's done, we're going to remove our waist yarn. We've got these all tied off, so that's good. Um, we're going to roll up our edge till we find that first row, okay? We've got our waist yarn coming out this way, which is what we want, okay? So there, you've got the right side facing you. You're gonna roll it up to the top row. You're gonna pinch that stitch and pull the yarn end out, okay? So go over a few more stitches, pinch that top stitch, pull out the first row. Gonna do that all the way around, okay? Roll it up, make sure you have the top row, pinch the stitch, pull it out. Okay, then what you could do is hide this end in the beanie so it's not gonna get tangled around your edge. And then just pull this off, okay? So go ahead, remove your waist yarn, and I'll see you back. All right, so from there, I took my yarn tails and I'm just weaving them back and forth through some of the stitches on the brim there, okay? On the inside of the brim, just like that. And I'll go back the other way. Just a few times. Oops, I'm gonna even cut that off because it's gonna be secure enough. There we go, just like that. Then you can turn your beanie inside the right way, okay? And there we've got it. Cute little guy. Okay, now what you're gonna do is you're going to take your head, you're going to put your beanie on the head. Fits perfectly. Now what we wanna do is we want to, I'm gonna turn it around, this is gonna be the back because my thumbs are at the front. You're gonna tuck this in just like this, okay? So see what I'm doing? I'm tucking that layer in just like that, folding it over, and I'm gonna mattress stitch down that side till I get to where it's tight, okay? So I'm not gonna do that on the camera again because we've done mattress stitching several times, but again, put it on your needle, mattress stitch down until you get to the base, and then I'll show you what I do at the base, okay? All right, so that's really what I want, okay? So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just take my needle, I'm gonna go into the stitch on the base there, and go across, and I'm just gonna sew this down so it's smoother, okay? So taking my needle, going in, picking up a stitch, and going up to that point where I basically ended, okay? Then I'm gonna go across to this one, go down into the beanie, and sew that one flat. See how that's going? I'm leaving it on the head because if you go down too low, when you're mattress stitching, if you, if you do it off the head, you'll go down too low and then it's gonna to be too tight. So that's why I do it while it's on the head, okay? This part you could do off head, but. It holds it in position and it makes it nice. So I'm gonna just go down and flatten those edges out just by sewing them on like that, okay? And that's it. I'm gonna tie off a knot. Hide this up into the area that's doubled there. Cut it off. And I have my pointy, my pointy beanie. That's all I want, just like that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now you're going to go grab a pom-pom, a faux fur pom-pom, color of your choice, and you're going to see me back. Oh, actually, no, pardon me. We're not going to do that. We're going to grab this first, okay? We're going to take this, then you're going to grab a faux fur pom-pom. We're going to pull that a little tight, okay? Then we're going to slip it on the head inside out. So let me get this end out. So the one that I pulled a little bit tighter not too tight, you can take that off now. You're going to make sure that that one tail is out the one side and the other one is at the top. You're gonna to put it inside out and over the neck, okay? So essentially, that's what it's gonna look like. Okay, just like that, smooth it out. Of course, you stretched it out after you got it off your machine. Then you're gonna pull that bottom, that bottom yarn end so it's tight against the neck. See how beautiful that works? Okay, then you're gonna fold this down and you're gonna do the same thing, making sure that this is nice and flat. 
pull on that yarn tail, use your hands, your thumbs, get it up into there and smooth that out so it's rolled over beautifully. And pull. But again, you want a nice smooth end. You don't want it all. So just pull up on it and it'll push up on those stitches just like that. See? Pull up on it and then you can pull those two together so it's nice and tight around the neck. You're going to tie these off. Don't cut them yet. You're going to cut one, but you don't need to cut. You need one. So you're going to tie that off into a knot. Cut one off just long enough so that you can hide it into your work. Up into that white collar. There you go. Cut it off. Get it out of your way. Then put your needle on the other piece. Okay. And what you're going to do is you're going to stretch this out so it's nice and perfect. You're going to take wherever that yarn end is. You're going to wrap it over. Pick up a piece of the neck and bring it through the back, just like that, okay? Going straight up and down. You want that to be straight up and down. Then you're going to pull it. See what that did? Then you're going to just go over. You're going to trail this down underneath the neck till you want your next section, wherever you want your next section to be, just like that, okay? And then you're going to go over top, in between that row if you can, and then do the same thing. Come around and out again. This will make your your this part straight. It won't be at an angle. Doing it the way I'm showing you will make it straight. Okay, move that over. And that's the size of that peak. I, I generally would go a little bit bigger, I think, but um, I've done another, I've done another one and I'll show you. This one's a bit bigger. I went a little bit wider. So you can choose what you want to do. I'm going to take this one out and go wider, but you're going to do that all the way around. Then you're going to tie off and hide your end. Okay, so have fun, friends. Go ahead and do that and then grab your faux fur pom-pom color of choice and we will move on. Okay, there it is. Now, I don't know if it's a thing about having an odd number, but on this one, I have five. <laughs> um, they say when you do things in sets or whatever, or can, uh, I don't know, that you should have an odd number decorating and all kinds of things. So it just worked out that way. But if it would have been six or four, I wouldn't have cared. <laughs> it still looks good. So I've grabbed this dark brown faux fur pom-pom. I just ordered more pom-poms off of Amazon. I got lots of different colors. And I love this one. This is fun. Don't don't be scared. You're going to take your, you're going to feel for that little place where it was sewn. You're going to take your scissors. And you're going to try to get in there. It's not that easy to do, but can be done because I've done it once already or twice. Okay. Oops. You're going to get in there until you can break that, that stitch. I already got loosened it. There we go. Did you hear that? Ah, okay. And then, well, you're going to keep doing it until you can get in there. This one is tight. Mother. Just there. Oh, I heard another split. Or you can use a seam ripper. You get in there till you open it up, and then you spread it out, and I'll be back with you. <laughs> okay, that took some effort, but I broke those stitches. And then it came out. Look for this little piece, and that's where the seam is. Okay. Then you're gonna just pull it apart. Take out that stuffing. Keep it if you want, but it's really cheap stuffing, so I just check it out. And essentially, that's what a pom-pom is. It's a little square, stuffed and sewn around. So there you go. A little lesson for free. Okay? <laughs> and then you're going to... I'm going to cut that off. You are going to get your hot glue gun. You are going to glue this on to the top of the head, however you like. I'm going to put the corner at the front. <laughs> and then the corners are over the ears, just like that. And hence the reason why I'm not putting ears on this, because... You're not going to see it anyway. So we're going to glue gun that down. Then we're going to put the beanie on. Then I'm going to add the eyes. Okay. And the nose. So go ahead. Get your glue gun. <laughs> Stick that down at the top of the head. And then see me back. <laughs> okay. So here's my question for you. <laughs> 
Do you think if uh, if you spend time just like laughing at yourself for like extended periods of time that you need to be committed? <laughs> oh, I laughed when I put these things on. This guy's got a little bit of a dread happening under there. <laughs> We're going to leave him. Okay. And then I blow dried their hair uh, for like 10 seconds. Look at that. Like it's so cool. <laughs> okay. So now you're going to take your beanie. <laughs> making sure that that uh, seamed part is at the back. You're going to put it on the head. Okay, just like that. And you're going to... I don't want to glue gun it down because the fibers are just going to lift off and it's going to... It's not going to stay. So take take some yarn and just uh, tack it down on the head. Okay, just, just like that. And you need to do that before you put the eyes on because the hair is going <laughs> to going to go in its own direction and once you tack it down then don't make this straight across because that'll look goofy but trim it up just a little bit and uh and then get your tan yarn and your safety eyes or actually well I'll explain that in a second okay what I was going to explain is that my safety eyes are like this I was going to go on I went on Amazon to order safety eyes um the other day and I usually get ones that have that little thing that you push onto the back and I saw these ones and I thought okay I'm going to try those they come in a package that I just opened because I just got them and I opened it upside down so all the sizes fell out of this little organized compartment so you know what I'll be doing this afternoon I'll be changing all my buttons but I'm going to take whatever size these ones are and then you just take a needle and a thread and you sew them on sew them where you want them okay so i don't have to show you how to do that needle and a thread to the back of the head um sew them on hide your yarn ends and you got your little eyes okay now grab your yarn on a needle that's this color of your face and we'll make the nose actually i decided i would show you i'm just taking regular thread and a needle i'm on the side of the head here I'm going to just sew this down like this because you're going to need a really sharp pointy needle to get through that faux fur piece and the head, okay? Not easy, but not so hard that you can't do it, right? I'm going to tie that off in a knot. I'm going to do one in the back and I'm going to do one on this side, okay? Then I'm going to use this same. I'm not, I'm not even going to, uh, well, I won't tie this last one off. I'll just weave it through to where I want my eye to be. I'm going to go into the eye. Then I will tack that down, go across to the other eye, tack that down, and uh, voila, it's done. Okay, so that's what I'm doing uh, with, with this piece. And then I will do the nose with you. All right, friends, so you got to order these these buttons these eyes because they are safer than any safety eyes look at them they got the little thing there I've doubled this thick sewing thread it's thicker than normal thread and uh I'm just going through picking up some stuffing too so I get it nice and thick and then you just go through the little loop and you just pull and it's secure on there. I've gone through several times already. Then I'm going to move over to where I want the other eye. I went under the stuffing to make sure that I captured it in there to give it some strength. Is that where I want this eye to go? I think that's where. And then I'm going to just do the same thing. So order yourself some of these eyes. If you don't have them and you don't have the ability to order them, then you can just sew them on with black yarn, of course. And you can uh, go to any of my video, a lot of my animal videos that you see. Um, that's what I've done. So you can just follow the instructions on there. Okay. So I'm going to continue to secure that down just like that. Um, and then you could even put just a tiny bit of glue in there. As long as you don't see it, you don't want your glue, gun, your glue to come out the side there. You want to make sure it's professional looking. Pay attention to detail. Poke that little um, piece down into there and, and add a little bit of glue to secure it if you need to. I don't think I'm going to need to once I'm done with this. And now let's move on to the nose. Okay, so I have my yarn on my needle. I'm going to poke it through the side of the head here. I'm going to come up. And I'm going to just go over one row, a full row of stitches. And I'm going to go back and forth. Oops. Don't get it caught under his little arm. Back and forth, back and forth. 
until it's as thick as I want it. Okay. Just over top. Keep going. That's three. Oops. And caught on this arm. Little fella. Four. And I'm not pulling so tight that it's pulling my, st my stitch rows apart. Okay. You're just nicely going over. Need one there. Five. I think one more after this and I shall call it done. <laughs> oh my word, little guy. You're going to get put in the corner. Okay. Now I'm going to go back in this side with my left hand, which I'm terrible at, and out where I went in. I'm going to tie a knot and I'm going to hide my ends. <laughs> All right, friends, there you have it. You can take their hair and you can slick it back however you want to give them a style <laughs> or let it be wild. Who cares? Whatever you like. But these are so dang adorable. Then I took my needle and I put some black yarn on it and I just went up the side of the head like we always do and I did two passes. So there's, there's two layers there. That's it. Okay. So there you have it. Now what you want to do, one more thing. You can hide him and do however you want with him, but there's one thing that you can do is you can take these joints, bend them up like that. Oh, I wish I was that agile. And you can stick a hair tie on there. Go right up to the joint, maybe. Stick a hair tie on there. No, nope, don't go right up to the joint. Go way lower, about middle. And then you have them sitting that way too, okay? When you're putting them on, on a shelf, you can tie his hands in front of him you just take it from there my friends my camera's too low but you take it from there and you enjoy the process get your little elf on the shelf made and have fun hiding them <laughs> and uh maybe finding them yourself <laughs> or hiding them for your kids just have a great time or sell them in your craft sales these guys will go gr really great in a craft sale i'm sure so there you have it Okay, one more little tip and trick. Sorry. See, I just have a hard time getting off the camera because <laughs> I just want to share with you. You can fold his hands like that. Take my favorite stitch marker. Grab a section there, one row. So two strands. Push that down into your piece. And then when you're sitting him, you've got his hands folded over his knees. Isn't that like just the cutest thing? <laughs> There you go. <laughs> All right, friends, that's that's uh, my tutorial for you today. Okay, so there is our Elf on the Shelf times two. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I'd love to see um, your elf, so please join my Facebook group. I'll put the link in the description box below and uh, show us what you've made. All right, so take care. I hope you have a fantastic day. Don't forget to subscribe.